Hey everybody, this is the fourth here, and in this video I will be showing you how to make your own 808 bass that is layered with a kick. So the first thing you need is a good kick. You can use whatever kick you want, and I'm not going to go too much into um, you know what the kick should be. You just want a nice, quick, punchy kick, uh, because a quick, punchy kick will fit better, um, or a quick, hard kick. Or they will fit better with the 808 bass. So your best bet is to choose a good sample that is short and punchy. Uh, like this one. So when you have a good, either punchy or hard, uh, but a good kick, the next thing you need is um, some kind of synthesizer. I'm going to do this in Citrus, just because it's what I typically use for everything. And I'm going to load up the default preset, which is just a sine wave. And so once you have a synthesizer that is a sine wave, you just want to make that into a bass. So I'm going to lower the frequency ratio to 1, and I'm going to take the pitch down on the main panel all the way to the bottom. And you can hear I have a nice clean bass now. So the next thing you need to make this an actual 808 type bass is a volume envelope. So to do this, I'm going to you know, take the attack uh, make that instant, take the sustain all the way down, and the release back as well. And now you can hear I have a nice, um, kind of an 808 sound already. Uh, but if you want a longer tail, you can turn the decay up. And so that's nice and long. But if you want it longer, you can you know, drag that out. But you know, you, you can set this up however you want. But I, I think that's pretty good right there. So now I have my kick and my bass. And I want to link them both to the mixer to separate mixer tracks, so I'm just going to right click channel routing, route selected channel starting from this track. And now you can see I have the kick and then the default, which is the bass. So now in the step sequencer and the piano roll, I'm going to you know layer these together so they play together. Um, but I want to do this at a lower pitch, probably. Because uh, I like my 808s nice and deep. So now, what I'm going to do is some side chaining to help the kick and the bass work together better. But the important thing to keep in mind is, um, you know, this is a very simple bass. It will work just fine in a trap track, but you might want to compress it, or you might want to distort it, or saturate it, or process it in a number of different ways. And if you do want to do that, it's important to remember to do it before you do the side chaining, because if you do it after the side chain, it will kind of undo um, the effects of the side chain to some extent. So I'm going to add a fruity wave shaper to just add a bit of saturation for demonstration purposes. And you can hear now the bass is, you know, nice and fat. A nice fat 808 bass. And so now I want to balance the bass with the kick and do the side chain. And the way I like to do this um, is to low pass it, uh, low pass the master mixer track, and this allows me to focus on the sub. So I can you know, turn up the volume and just really hear the sub in particular. 
uh, to see how things are sounding. And you know, when you do this, you want to get the level of that 808 bass to be balanced with the kick. So if you want your kick to be harder, if you want your kick to be punchier, then you'll probably have it lower, relatively. But if you want the overall 808 to be fatter and less punchy, then you will have it, the bass will be louder compared to the kick. Um, so this is just, you know, using your ears to balance it, maybe using a reference track to kind of double check and compare to yours to see, you know, where their kick hits at and where their bass hits at. But to me, that, that sounds pretty good. And then I like to keep the, you know, that low pass filter on as I do the side chain as well. So now to side chain, what I'm going to do is um, right click the arrow down here, the routing arrow, when you have the kick track selected for the 808 track. So I have the kick track selected and then on the 808 track, I'm gonna right click that arrow and do side chain to this track. And then, you know, after any processing you've done, I'll add a fruity limiter. And I'm going to turn the attack all the way down on the limit section. And then I'm going to go into the compressor section and select sidechain one. If you have other tracks routed to the bass track, you might have to play around with this and find which one is the kick. But it should be pretty clear if you turn the threshold down all the way. Uh, you can see the impact from the kick is right there. And if, if, if I play the kick some more, you, know, you can see it uh, showing up on the limiter. So now that I make sure that the sidechain is the kick track, I can adjust the threshold and the ratio, um, you know, turn the ratio up. And really, again, it's using your ears. Turn the volume up a bit if you need to. And you, know, you can get things to sound exactly how you want them to. So I like to turn down the release um, so that it's more the bass comes in more instantly or more quickly. Um, but I have heard some tracks where they have the release up quite a bit and it kind of has a rolling in sound to the bass. Um, so that, that's personal taste, but I like it to be pretty quick to come in. And that sounds good to me, but of course you can adjust the release, the ratio, the threshold, you know, any of the compressor settings to get things to sound uh, more how you want them to. So that's pretty much it, uh, but I do have a couple other things that I want to mention. Um, in this video I synthesized my own bass, but you can of course use an 808 sample if you prefer. Um, I personally like to make my own. And if you do make your own, and you feel like your 808s sound a bit stale, one thing you can do is you can add a pitch envelope um, to the bass. So I'm going to turn this on, uh, and I'll take this up to the top, the first point, take the second point to the midway, uh, and delete the last one. And you'll hear it has you know, a very big pitch envelope. And you can kind of customize that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the pitch envelope amount, which is this knob here. And I'm going to take it all the way down and I can push it up until it sounds where I want it to be. And you can hear it adds just a little bit of a different character to the 808. Um, and you can adjust the tension on that curve as well. Mm -hmm. 
So if, if you like how it sounds with the pitch envelope, you can use it. Uh, if you don't, you don't have to use it. Um, but here's how it sounds uh, off. And here it is on. But that's you know pretty much it for this video. Hopefully it was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.